Welcome to another History Mystery. I'm Mimi, and today we're going way back to one of our older collection items with a mystery that involves famous generals and a trip up north to the state of Maryland. Let's take a look. While updating our main exhibit spaces over the past year, we took a close look into our textile collection. There are several, several interesting pieces, but not all of them are closely related to the story of Thomas County, and some have condition issues that would keep us from being able to display them. One such item was this beautiful blue skirt that you see here. A small tag was pinned to the skirt, explaining that it had been worn as part of a dress to a ball held in honor of the Marquis de Lafayette. You know, no big deal. Just that French guy who helped us win the American Revolution. We had to know more. Was the skirt really worn to the ball for the Marquis? And if it was, how did it get into our collection? Our records revealed the skirt was given to us by a lady named Gladys Bibb in 1989. Her story was that the skirt had been passed down through her family for generations, and the ancestor who wore it had the last name of Adams. Naturally, we made a trip to Ancestry.com and researched Gladys's family tree. It turns out she was related to a family named Adams, who lived in Maryland along the Potomac River. So we have a colonial family that lived in Maryland that owned the skirt, but did they really go to a ball for the Marquis de Lafayette? We landed on a pair of direct ancestors to Gladys, a man named Daniel Jennifer Adams, born in 1749, and his wife, Nancy Ann Hanson Adams, born in 1761. Now you may be thinking that a man named Jennifer sounds like the plot to a Johnny Cash song, but Daniel Jennifer Adams was named after his maternal uncle, Daniel of St. Thomas Jennifer, a prominent plantation owner, politician, and signer of the Constitution of the United States. On top of all that, this uncle was best friends with his neighbor, General George Washington. Thanks to his uncle, Daniel Jennifer Adams had access to the big man himself, with Daniel's family plantation being just down the river from George Washington's home of Mount Vernon. Washington kept meticulous notes on his days in his journals, listing who came to supper and who stopped by on business. He also kept much of his letters and kept good records of all his buying and selling. It's in these records we see that Washington and Daniel were very much involved in each other's lives. But Washington may not have been too happy about that. Apparently, Washington thought Daniel was that worthless young fellow. There were several times that Daniel really let the general down. The first time came when Washington let Daniel sell some of his produce. They agreed Daniel would sail down to Bermuda, sell the grain, and use the money to buy goods for Washington. Daniel sold most of the grain, but then he took a little detour to Jamaica and also bought the ship he was sailing on, including all the goods on board. That means no grains and no money for Washington. As you might imagine, Washington was a little bit upset by this move. He sued Daniel, forcing him to sail back up to Virginia, where Washington put the boat up for sale, trying to make up the money he lost. Except no one would buy the boat. Washington ended up spending over $300 buying the boat from himself at the auction. Another upset for Washington came during the American Revolution. Daniel decided to join the Maryland Militia Line, a group of volunteer soldiers in charge of protecting the state against the British, under the direction of General, you guessed it, George Washington. Daniel did surprisingly well in the military. In fact, he was the fourth best major in the Maryland Militia. But then his pride got in the way. By the end of the year 1779, Daniel had been passed over for a promotion. And worst of all, it went to someone he just couldn't stand. Daniel wrote a letter to Washington, explaining that he knew this was crunch time for the army and the colonies, but being a major just didn't pay enough for him to support his new family. He had just married Nancy. This wasn't a total lie. Just a few years before, Daniel's father died with several debts to be paid. Washington stepped up and said he would buy the Adams family home and pay off all their debts for them. A pretty big gesture. Daniel agreed to it, but kept coming up with new excuses for why he and his sisters couldn't leave the home and why they kept selling off pieces of property that were due to Washington. Daniel was definitely down at this time, but with his famous and wealthy uncle around, he was never out. 
Years later, the famous general became the famous first president of the United States of America. After the American Revolution, Congress passed a bill stating that soldiers who fought in the war would receive a pension for their service, but Congress set a strict limit. Those eligible for pension had to have served from 1780 onward, a month after Daniel quit the military. Daniel wrote a letter to his famous neighbor begging for help. He told Washington that his military service had left him in bad health and his attempts at work had left him with very little money, so surely Congress could be persuaded to help out. Washington never replied. Don't feel too bad for the Adams family, though. When that well-off uncle died, he left Daniel a 16,000-acre plantation, so life couldn't have been too hard for him, right? So now we knew all about the family and their connection to General George Washington. But what about the skirt and the party for General Lafayette? During the war, Washington and Lafayette formed a father and son bond that would last their lifetimes. When the war ended in 1784, Lafayette was considered a hero and went touring around the new nation celebrating. One of his first stops was in August of 1784 at Mount Vernon. Washington and Lafayette partied it up for 10 days before the Marquis continued on his tour. And who got invited to these parties? Washington's well-to-do neighbors and friends. We can surmise that Daniel and Nancy Adams were guests at one of these parties where Nancy might have worn this very skirt. This skirt and these stories are currently on display in our temporary exhibit at the Thomasville History Center. Alongside the skirt is a replica of the skirt and the dress that may have gone with it. Come visit us at the museum through March to see this and other fabulous exhibits about Thomas County and our sometimes surprising history. Thanks for watching.